Okay, let's go on to the wide receiver position. My this is this is uh, Dre's boy, but this is slowly becoming my guy here. I think we this got, is your dude. I know. I love. I, I love this fool. I've been uh, pretty hyped. I'm pretty upset. I don't have him in dynasty, but we got Kadarius Tony. Kadarius Tony, the wide receiver for the New York Giants. He just beat Odell Beckham's uh, rookie single game uh, receiving record. Receiving yards record, uh, he beat him by four yards. <laughs> uh, it was previously 185, and now Kadarius Tony beats it with 189 yards. This guy, the rest of the season, I think he's he's going to be very viable, and I think he's like going to become a start every week. Uh, he did he beat that record, and he got ejected in the fourth quarter. There's still six minutes left. They were literally driving. He, he on his tenth reception. The, he got ejected for punching a guy. So, uh, so long as there's no like suspension or anything like that, which it doesn't seem like there's going to be. I think that you, if you need a receiver and you want upside, dude, Kadarius Tony's your guy. This guy is the shiftiest wide receiver. Like at, yards after the catch, I mean, the guy just refuses to just be, be complacent with the yards he got from after or before before or after the catch. I guess you could say, yeah. I mean, the guy just fucking, he moves. He, he <laughs> It's insane. Like, as good as Trayvon Diggs is, there's a couple routes in here where he just left Trayvon Diggs in the dust. Like, he just, Trayvon Diggs went one way, and he said, no, I'm going the other way. Um, so, yeah, Kadarius Tony, I think the, this is definitely, like, the number one re- receiver. And if you were cut to the clip, I'll edit it in later, cut to the clip, us talking about uh, – Kadarius Tony last week. Dre said it. Play him in the the the. Um, uh, he was our sleeper start. So, yeah, one of, one of the sleepers you guys threw out there, and uh, I mean, you nailed it. <laughs> Missed on a couple different ones, but nailed yeah, that. Yeah, it one. can't be it's perfect, yeah. but you know, you find some hidden gems like this. Uh, Kadarius Tony, another sleeper that we had um, coming up later, but I mean, yeah, I love it. You know, obviously it helps. Kenny Galladay was pretty much getting blanketed, and he got hurt, and then. No Shepard, no uh, Slayton. So we'll see what his production can be when those guys get back into the lineup. But when you see what this guy is capable of, I don't give a fuck if those guys come back into the lineup. Like, I need to get this guy. I need to get the football in this guy's hands. And because gotta, we just see how, like, you get the ball in his hands. And it's, like, it, it's crazy because he's, like, running around. And, like, you see the whole team trying to, like, tackle him. And it's just, like, they're, like, they going crazy to get to him down. And he just, like, he's just shifty. He's fast. He's elusive. He's just bobbing and weaving. And he, he's just all over the place. Like, you know, it's insane, but uh, yeah. I, if I'm the Giants, I'm definitely finding multiple ways to get this the football in this guy's hands. I mean, he he had one rush, you know, he lined up in the Wildcat. Yeah, he threw almost the ball. scored a touchdown. Yeah, he threw a pass. Devontae Booker dropped it, but I mean, he would have had some passing yards right there. So they're finding ways to get him incorporated in the offense. He headbutts this guy and, right here. <laughs> wow, on accident. Watch. He like goes down. It's pretty funny. Yes. Oh, He's damn. like, bro. <laughs> um, but, you know, yeah. And by the way, his snap percentage at the beginning of the season, it's literally gone up progressively. Uh, the last game, you know, it went down a little bit, but you got to think he got ejected during the game. So that affects that as well. Uh, but So yeah. Gi- Giants players, Devontae Booker or Kadarius Tony, who you put Kadarius Tony. Yeah, I'm going Kadarius Tony on that one too. I think outside of Darrell Williams, this might be my favorite guy this week to try to get. If you didn't grab him already. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you if you last happen week, to miss so. last week, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Kadarius Tony, amazing. Uh, he also said in an interview, he, he's like, you know, I he's like, when they go left, I go right, <laughs> and then he, he's like, I, you know, I kind of look at it like freeze tag. I mean, that's what that's it's really like. what it's it like, is. <laughs> I mean, I feel like maybe this is a dumb analogy, but it's almost like. Do you ever see like videos of people trying to catch a chicken and they're just like running around like crazy and like they're like, oh come here, like I'm trying to get this chicken and like dude, that's almost like what it's like trying to catch him or get him down and. Yeah, Kadarius Tony. His else. like start go speed is like like his ability like just stop and then go stop and go. It's like ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at I mean like even on this play, Trayvon Diggs goes to swing it and he's got it in one hand and he just it's so tight has the ball like there's no you're not getting it from him. Uh, okay, let's go on to another wide receiver. We have Hunter Renfro. I thought you had a picture of uh, Derek Carr up for a second for his his template. But, uh, no, yeah, Hunter Renfro is just getting, you know, all the offense basically uh, for the Raiders. Not really, but, you know, he's he's definitely getting targeted a lot. I think in a PPR league, this guy has to be owned. I mean, yeah, a thousand percent. I think we touched on it. I feel like, you know, a couple we of these guys, we keep talking about, about these receivers. And it's just because – 
in my opinion, you know, when I'm going over these waiver wire guys, these are guys that I, if they were on the waiver wire in my league, like I would want them on my team, um, if possible. So, you know, and Hunter Renfro available in 40 to 60% of leagues right now. I mean, the guy is a PPR machine. I think we said it on last week's episode. He's basically like a, like a Julian Edelman. He's like a, 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 a West, yeah. a West Welker, um, out there for this team. I mean, he's had 10 or more PPR points in all five games that he's played right now. He's had five to six receptions in every single game he's played. He's wide receiver 25 in PPR leagues right now. So if I told you there's a top 25 wide receiver on the waiver wire, you go get him, you know? Like if it's just crazy because, you know, for me personally too, I, I'm a Brandon Ayuk owner in one league, and it's like I'm still just holding on, hope, hoping that he can be what he was last year. But it's like you have guys like Brandon Ayuk who I saw were like 85% rostered. And it's like, dude, why is Brandon Ayuk being rostered when Hunter Renfro is out there in a ton of leagues? But Hunter Renfro is, you know, maybe not a guy who's going to win your your league, but he's you're not going to lose your week because of Hunter Renfro. You're gonna, you're, you're losing your week starting Allen Robinson. You're, you're losing your week starting Brandon Ayuk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, it's – you're losing weeks starting Odell Beckham Jr. I don't think Odell, Odell, Odell had a good game last week. And it's like, but you have a guy over here who's just, you know, as we say, the lunch pail guy, just comes in, gets the job done, and goes home. Ten or more PPR points in every single game. He's just sitting on the waiver wire waiting for you to swoop him up. Yeah. Go get him. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely with it. If he's available, it's it's 68% owned in ESPN, but um, that went up from last week, and he didn't have the craziest uh, game this past yeah. this past week. So maybe some people drop him. I think you definitely need to add him. Um, let's go on to Amon Ross St. Brown for the Detroit Lions. Uh, Detroit Lions are just, they have been riddled with injuries, it seems. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so you got Quintus Cephas. He goes out. I think he broke his, his collarbone. So he's going to be out for the year. Broken. Um, and then you have, you know, Tyra Williams. Still banged up. He's out. So it's kind of like last man standing almost over yeah. there with Amon St. Brown. I think they have Khalif Raymond. Um, but I'm not really stressing about Khalif Raymond. You know, good for him. He's in yeah. the NFL. Obviously, he's doing better than I am. But um, I'm not concerned about him to be like this guy who just kind of, you know, dominates and touches. And for what it's worth, I don't know what it is, but H- Hawkinson, the last two weeks, I mean, the first two weeks, monster games. Last three weeks, dud games. And I don't, have, I don't know if it has any correlation I mean, I actually it has to have some type of correlation due to the fact that their center was out. I think Taylor Decker's his name. He was out. You had Panay Sewell. I'm not sure if he played or not, but I know he was banged up going into the game. If he played, he might have missed as well. So maybe they just have Hawkinson in there blocking more than at going out and running routes. And obviously Hawkinson being the best you know, pass catcher, I guess, outside of DeAndre Swift they have on the team. Maybe the defenses are really just making a uh, – an emphasis to kind of like blanket him. So that kind of just leaves Amon St. Brown as the, like the last man standing. He does lead the Lions wide receiver in targets. He's got 26 and he's had eight targets in back to back games. So yeah, he's kind of like a break glass in case of emergency guy for me. If you're just looking for anybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe you're in a spot. You have like Adam Thielen. Too. who's not been doing too well. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I mean, I'm in a league where I have Allen Robinson and Ayuk, and it's like these guys are just crushing me each and every week. And it's like I just keep playing them thinking, like, come on, guys. You guys got to get it together. And it's like at this point, like, give me a Mon St. Brown. Give me a Mon Ross St. Brown. You know, give me a guy like Hunter Renfro. Like, give me those guys over those two Tony. any day because I just need somebody who's going to actually do something. Yeah. And, and put up more than th- three points. Yeah. Yeah, it's rough. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I like that ad. Um, then we got Tim Patrick. We talked on Tim Patrick these past couple of weeks, I feel like. Um, but with everything going on, Teddy Bridgewater, I still think, you know, he's. I don't think he's a bad quarterback. I think you're in a situation where, uh, yeah, Tim Patrick is a definite, definite, he needs to be on more. Yeah, I like Tim Patrick a lot. Uh, I don't know if it's because he's got two first names, Tim Patrick, but <laughs> he's kind of like a, you know, for so long, I feel like, you know, Robert Woods, Bobby Trees was just kind of getting slept on. And I don't know if it's the name of Robert Woods or Tim Patrick or whatever it is. You know, they don't have these flashy names like Odell Beckham Jr. or Brandon Ayuk, you know. So I don't know what it is. But if you just look at the numbers, I mean, the guy's had 12 or more PPR points in four of the five games. He's coming off a good game, seven receptions, 89 yards last week. And it's basically just him and Sutton. I know you got Noah Fant there um, in the passing game as well. But, you know, you got Judy who's banged up. 
with the ankle. He's now still on IR, and then KJ Hamler's out for the year. So it's it's the Tim Patrick and Cortland Sutton show over there for the Denver Broncos. And, you know, we were just talking about Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater and being like, maybe he's not the most electric quarterback, but he's very efficient. Yeah. So, you know, the guy's the guy understands football. He understands where to put it, and he's an accurate quarterback. Quarterback. Uh, he's an accurate quarterback. Quarterback. I keep saying that. Quarter. Is that am I saying that right? Quarterback. 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 Cornerback. No. What are you trying to say? Wide Quarterback. Receiver? Yeah. I don't know. Tongue twister right now. Uh, but yeah, what I'm trying to say is Teddy Bridgewater, a good quarterback in terms of getting the football where he needs to get it. So yeah, I would go get Tim Patrick. He's available in 60 to 80 percent of leagues. Um, I think you know he's just a guy who's like again like another lunch pill kind of guy. Just gets it done. Not a sexy name, but. You know, you're never losing your week. I mean, that's 12 or more PPR points in four or five games, it's 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 crazy. Like I said, yeah. he's uh, he's out there, but then we're still starting guys like Ayuk. Yeah, pretty crazy. Let's go on to Devontae Parker, the Miami Dolphins wide receiver. I still think that I I, I love giving you shit, but the, I dev, I'm right there with you, Devontae Parker. Put him on, uh, put him in your lineup. I think you can add him for sure. And and be happy about it, like we said, like we kind of touched on on the other guys. It's like Allen Robinson is screwing you, Brandon Ayuk is screwing you, even Adam Thielen might be kind of screwing you too. Uh, so the, in a situation like this, why don't we go and grab Devonte Parker? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, there's a ton of receivers out there that are just underperforming, you know. And it, like I said, it's, I think it's just the name you're holding on to the name. But if you were just to strip the name and look at the pure numbers of what these players are doing you know player a versus player b like you would go with guys like tim patrick hunter renfro and Devonte parker in my opinion i know i'm a dolphin stand but i mean Devonte parker is a really talented wide receiver in the nfl he's I mean, averaging eight targets a game in the four games he played didn't play last week because he got the hamstring injury and that's kind of been his biggest knock as a professional in the league his just just his ability to stay healthy and stay on the field but if the dolphins can get two back this week and Parker plays. I do like him as a flex play this week, um, especially if he's going to see around eight targets. Um, they're going to be in London against the Jags. The Jaguars' pass defense not very good. They're bottom ten, so a good matchup for Devonte Parker, especially if Tua can come back. I do like the upside that he presents uh, in that game against the Jags this week. Hey, did you like that video? No, not the one of Big Ben completely eating shit when nobody even touched him. I'm talking about our fantasy football video we just did. You just watched. Well, guess what? That was just a clip from the full audio podcast. So if you want to check out the whole thing, links down below, AVG Fantasy Football Podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, all of them. Anywhere you can get audio podcasts, we're there. Go ahead and check it out. And if you don't want to look at your fantasy team to look the way Big Ben does right here, wait for it. Come on, replay. This is, you're gonna be, this is your fantasy team, but that won't be your fantasy team if you subscribe to AVG Fantasy Football. So go ahead, subscribe, and like this video. Subscribe to the channel. And like, 